Hey guys, this is Nate here and I'm coming to you from the beautiful Ventura in California and I've got a word for you guys. This has been on my heart for like three days now, even while we're flying on the plane. The Lord put this um, word in my heart and I knew it wasn't just for America. I feel like this is a now word for the body of Christ, a very simple one, but I feel like I want to pray with some people because... What I saw in a vision about three days ago was people standing at this place. It's like they were standing at this cliff face and they were like, God, you led me here. Why do I feel like I'm alone? God, you led me here. Now what? It's almost like, God, what's my first step? Well, like, what, what do I do now? Because when, you, when you're standing at the edge of a cliff, you're looking over and you go, okay, well, now what kind of thing? It's, it's, it's this kind of confronting place where you're looking you're looking down and thinking that I have no options now, you know. And I, I really sense that there was this, there was this assignment of the enemy to really bring fear into a lot of people. There was this assignment of the enemy to really make people feel like, well, God, you led me, to, you led me to a place that there is, I'm suddenly out of options, you know. And uh, so I want to pray for some people and share a little bit of very simple insight. But I, I want to pray. I really feel like there is going to be something united in some people tonight. Um, so. Good to see you guys. I want to say hi first to a few people. There's Corin, good to see you. Bella, Renee, it's really good to be in the United States, guys. We had a really beautiful family day today, really well needed. We've been so busy uh, in the last few months that we haven't had the chance to really um, enjoy being a family kind of thing. We've just been gung-ho and um, leading up to coming over here as well. There's been so much to plan. And so it was really good to have a family day today. Um, it was really good to be able to just um, enjoy ourselves over here at a fall festival. So it was beautiful. Um, don't look at my Instagram though, because Christy was taking some um, funny videos of me. Uh, she put me on a funny little cow uh, train ride thing and it was, uh, they were all have, they were having a good laugh at my, at my expense basically. But um, so, I want to get into this word. Many people have been feeling that they're at the precipice of something that God led them to, and they were in so much hope and faith that it was going to be a great place, but they're suddenly faced with the fact that they're needing to jump or step into a greater place of risk to be able to accomplish the thing that God's called them to do, and they're feeling this sense of fear or foreboding. I want to tell you something. It, it's, this, is not, um, this is obviously not for everybody, but I'm feeling like it's a corporate word in the sense that the body of Christ are entering into a new place. You know, as I shared my word about and, um, the five, year 5778 is the year of the pioneer. The body of Christ is needed to burst through something, almost like, you know, on Charlie and the Chocolate Factory where they're in that uh, elevator and they're needing to burst through that glass ceiling. The body of Christ is at a glass ceiling right now. And the choice is simply, do we just sit in the elevator without movement or do we press that, you know, that scary red button and allow God to take us through into a, into a new stratosphere, into a new place that he has for us? It's scary because it, it, it requires a certain, it requires an absolute 110% level of faith and trust. But it also requires absolute abandon because when you let go of some old things and old ways to be able to grasp, it's almost like when you're, it's almost like when you're on, a, on a rung, you know, like the monkey bars at, a, at a, um, a playground and there's a there's a bar that's really far away. You have to swing with complete abandon. You can't, you can't still hold on to the other one to be able to grab the next rung. You have to swing with complete abandon knowing that that rung you're going to grab onto is going, you're going to reach it. You know what I mean? And so I feel like the body Christ is at that place, we're at this precipice, we're at this place that is powerful. You know, there are so many new things that God is wanting to release through the body of Christ right now. There is such a pioneering season for us of emerging through, and it's going to be a season of souls. It's going to be a season of completely turning around areas where the body of Christ has walked in dysfunction. Um, I'm seeing the body of Christ step, um, the bride of Christ come into its healthiest days. I'm seeing the body of Christ come into such a unity. I'm seeing the body of Christ come into a time of thriving and truly being in this place where we're enthralled with our first love again. There's something that God is doing so deeply in the body that he's like, it's so black and white now. It's like you can't stay there and you're going to know if you're there in this place where you're just feeling stale because you're going to feel it. It's almost like jump away, like step into your awakening, step into your destiny. There's no point staying in this lukewarm place. See, you know, when we talk about lukewarm, sometimes we think about sin, but it's not just about sin. It's even sometimes just about camping in a place of, of, of hopelessness. It's camping in a place of being without faith, camping in a place with a hunger and, and, and being completely in love with and, and in this place of intimacy with the Lord. Lukewarm sometimes is this, this basically living in the outer courts when God's calling us into the throne room. I'm sensing such a, um, an excitement in my spirit because the body of Christ is choosing. They're leaving the pews behind. I'm, I'm just 
just a nobody. God couldn't use me. And they're stepping boldly into this place of faith. And I was reading just today about how Jesus calms the storm in Matthew um, 11, uh, sorry, Matthew 8, 20, um, 26. And I love it because Jesus replied to them, right? So we know the story how Jesus was in the boat and they, they were freaked out. The disciples were scared. And he said, you of little faith, why are you so afraid then he got up and rebuked the winds. Very simple, right? So this is very simple stuff, but I really felt this is a season where the Lord is saying, step into faith. Step into this, into this courage. Step into your rightful place. See, Jesus modeled what we do in a storm. You've been facing storms right now. Jesus is saying you don't need to just roll. You know, one thing the disciples could have done is just basically buried their heads in the sand and gone, you know what, this storm will pass. Or, you know what, if I die, then I die. But, I, you know, I don't know what to do. It's almost like the storm was too big for them. The storms of life, the storm that's going on in media, the storms that are going on around the world. It might be hurricanes. It might be all these different things going around in the world. What do we do as the body of Christ? Do we bury our heads in the sands? Do we recognize there is something on the inside of me that's getting excited? There's something on the inside of me that knows this is my time. When storms come, I activate. I mean, I'm activated all the time. When storms come, I, I get this something rise up on the inside of me. This is my time. And mountain movers are being released in this season to be able to tackle the heart things. We weren't just called to tackle the things that we know we can orchestrate and manage. We were called to be able to tackle the things that look difficult in the world. We were called to those places to be able to be an answer and speak into those situations. We were called to release Jesus from the inside of us because I know something about Jesus is when he's living in and through you, you are just looking for a situation for you to release. It's like a release for you. Like, Jesus, yes! It's like that tap, that thing on the inside of you that is stewarded through intimacy and love with the Lord. It's like it's always looking for a direction it's always looking for a place to explode. It's always looking for a situation to switch. It's always looking for something to come and to be able to release the kingdom of heaven into. And that's what God's doing right now in the earth. And the interesting thing about what Jesus said, he said, you of little faith. He's saying you of little, the Greek word is pistis. You, and, and that word is translated, um, the root of that word basically says you of little persuasion. You of little persuasion, like you are not persuaded in the you, you are not in a place of being fully persuaded by the love and the goodness of God that I've been modeling in my life Jesus is saying you are not you are not persuaded he said you he says this why are you so afraid so they were afraid they weren't persuaded the word in here f afraid it wasn't the word phobia it was a different word I can't remember what it is now but the Greek word basically means why are you being why are you timid? Why are you being cowardly? And it basically, see, a phobia of fear is when there's, when there's a dread. And I feel like Jesus was, was, was speaking more to the fact of why are you not courageous? Like, haven't you seen what I've been modeling? Haven't you, can't you see the life that I've been modeling every single day? You need to step into a place of being fully persuaded in me and that allowing that courage to come out of you so that the things around you that look too big for you, the storms in life, they have to shift. They have to change. So Something has to rearrange. And so I believe right now we're in a season where God is calling believers not to fight with each other, not to step into this place of, you know, we're, we're, it's almost like I'm, I, there's so much people out there giving revelation and, on different things and, and uh, you know, that, that are going on in the world. But hey, why, why don't we just actually go do something about it? Why don't we actually just go change it? Why don't we actually just step out our front porch and not just talk about it on our little keyboards and actually do something about it, yeah? And I feel like that's what God's saying. I was on the plane coming over here and I had such a burning in my my heart for America and about what's happening in this nation right now and it wasn't it wasn't a, it wasn't like this sense of like oh woe is America it was a sense of excitement but see the thing is is that God is doing something so significant right here whenever you see a storm whenever you see a battle whenever you ever see something that is just exploded and flared up in the natural there is something in the spirit that is kindling there is an awakening happening body of, the body of Christ is awakening anytime you see people they're, they're just you know they're going off at the slightest tangent about something it might be to do with, you know, uh, or it might be to do with the bathrooms, the target, and all these different things like that. It, it might be whatever situation, the, the, the storms, the hurricanes. God is doing something in that situation that is flaring up the enemy, and the body of Christ have an opportunity to emerge and be a voice in the middle of the darkness. And I'll speak over you tonight that whatever situation you're going through, whatever storm you're going through, wherever you're at in your life, God is saying, jump onto the next rung. Jump into a place of faith. Jump into a place of courage. Jump into a place of hope. Whatever is going on in your marriage.
marriage, in your, in your home, in your family, with your children, in your finances, jump to the next rung. Say, Lord, I refuse to stay here. I don't know how to do this, but I refuse to stay in a place of cowardice. I refuse to stay in a place of hopelessness because I know that my God is with me. I know that you're taking me to a new place and I'm going to trust you. And the thing is, is that our faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word. And how do we get faith? How do we get fully persuaded? We hear his voice. We make time to hear his voice. If you feel like you're not hearing God's voice, just give him some time, guys. I'm feeling such a sense that there's people just needing to hear his voice. I'm just feeling so, I'm even just feeling such a burning in my heart now as I'm just on here. I'm just sensing and discerning. There's a lot of people feeling like, God, I haven't heard you. I don't know if I heard you, God. I feel like I've missed you. And I feel like that. I just need to step up. I'm getting into a prophetic flow a little bit. Yeah, there's, there's people here. I speak into your marriages. I speak into your home life. Shift in the name of Jesus. Shift in the name of Jesus. I speak to hearts right now that are hurt and, and feeling just almost like God had abandoned them in that place, that the precipice that he's taken them. I command your heart come into a full awakening in the name of Jesus. When you've been living in fear, when you've been living in a place of foreboding, I ask the Lord God just for a love explosion, encounters of your love, dreams of your love tonight, God, that you would breathe afresh upon hearts, that you would ignite hearts, God, with a fresh passion and a fresh fire to step out of the place of hopelessness and defeat and step into a new fire, step into a new awakening, stepping out of those places of being timid and scared and afraid and not fully persuaded in the goodness and love of God that he's for you, that he's behind you, and if God is for you, who can be against you? It is a new day, and I prophesy you are stepping into the new day. You are stepping into the new thing, and I just command bodies to be healed right now. There's some people over here with some sicknesses and disease in their body. I command to break off you in the name of Jesus. You watch, there's a fire being released to you. You guys, are, there's going to be people that message me with testimonies where they felt the fire of God over their bodies. Roboku, I release a fire, a fresh fire in the name of Jesus, a fresh fire. I'm sensing such a jealousy of the Lord that he's wanting you to step into a place of freshness. He's wanting you to step into a place of fresh passion. He's wanting to see your bodies aligned. He's wanting to see your finances aligned. He's wanting to see your vision aligned. He's wanting to see you step into a place of being a, the pioneer and the carrier. See, the thing is, is that when you're in a place of hopelessness and defeat, you have an inability to see what you carry. You have an inability to create. You have an in, inability to birth and bring forth the thing that God has called you to bring forth. Well, I call this, I prophesy, this is your season of bringing forth. This is your season of birthing the new. This is your season of coming into your fullness of hope and destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. Whew, feeling that fire, feeling that fire, Lord. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Just for new, Father, just that you're pouring out new things. You're pouring out new things, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Roboku Satarnake. Mm, there's a fresh thing God's doing. He's doing in you. There's a fresh thing he's doing in you. Yeah. There's some people out there. God says you are not invisible. You are not invisible. He's pursuing your heart tonight. Just give him a moment to say, Lord, here's my heart. Have my heart. He's going to do something fresh in your heart tonight. Yeah, just remove all the things, all the things that have been covering God. Give, turn stony hearts and hearts of flesh, oh God. Give people a fire and a passion again to go after you, Lord. Lord God, give people, I just, I just see people just kneeling down and surrendering tonight. Let this be your fresh surrender. Let tonight be your fresh new surrender to the Lord. When you don't understand things, let tonight be your fresh surrender. See, the world will say, bury your head in the sand in a storm. But the Lord will say, surrender to me in a storm. Because when you surrender, suddenly you are fully persuaded. Something shifts on the inside of you. And then you stand up and you rebuke the things the enemy is trying to do to you. And you can be standing at a huge tsunami in front of you and you'll go... This is, not, this is not going to win over me because I suddenly am aware of who is behind me, who is with me, who's pouring into me, who's, who, who is the greater force and power in my life. There's a new persuasion coming. There is something fresh he's doing in you. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. I just see he's just really moving in a lot of people. 
who's just feeling really tender, almost like you're feeling encouraged because of the words, but you're feeling there's a rawness at the same time. You're feeling there's a rawness, almost like someone peels back a page of your heart and, you know, you, you feel, peels back this some layer of your heart and you know that God is this really, he's like grabbing you and just breathing a bit of something. He's doing something. Who's just put up a heart or a lot or whatever you call it. I don't know, just so I know that there's people here that are feeling that rawness, but it's good rawness. It's like, yeah. I'm feeling something tonight. You watch. I just declare awakening of you. God is after you. This is your time. This is your season. Do not allow life to convince you of otherwise. Do not allow life to persuade you of anything less than what you're called to do. Because now is your time to arise and shine. Arise and shine, body of Christ. Arise and shine. Step into your shoes. Step into your rightful place. Now is your time. So I hope God, that encouraged you guys. Um, we leave for DC in a few days. We're in LA, uh, LA or well, Ventura at the moment in California, and we'll be leaving uh, for DC in a few days, and we'll be there. And so we can't wait to see some people there, bump into some people and say hi. Um, and then uh, we'll let you know of our travels. We're doing some prayer meets in LA and New York. And of course, we're doing our praying over. Um, we're praying over the unborn as well in DC and just serving really the vision of uh, waking the dawn and rise up while we're there and just pouring into whatever God's doing there, whatever he leads us to do, we're going to do that. So that's the whole purpose of this trip. And we're just really, really just so grateful and thankful that we're here. We just, I, I just, I just was a mess before the Lord this morning and just like, God, thank you that we get to be a part of history. Thank you that we get to pour into this nation. Thank you, God, that we get to just partner with what you're doing in this nation. And we're so blessed for it, guys. So. Yeah, you got me emotional, but I just know that the Lord is doing something powerful here. He's doing something so powerful in the nations. It doesn't matter what country you're from now. I know this was word was for you, but in terms of our trip here, we know we're here on assignment just to pour and love in this nation. And I'm just looking out over this beautiful, beautiful valley tonight, and I'm just speaking hope and destiny over it because God has a hope and a destiny. Many years ago, Christy and I used to drive over this same region and drive through the Malibu canyons and drive through all this and just declare a wakey, wakey over it. To Declare awakening over it and you can see that he's doing it in this nation in this state and so we're so excited to partner with that anyway guys bless you please share this if you feel to if this is going to bless somebody send it to the inbox whatever you want to email it to them whatever but I know there's a fresh fire on this because I know that God is calling the mountain movers in this season to arise and to shine and to begin to speak to the things that begin that try to rise up and tell us you know they try to speak and dictate things to you like they're saying this is truth this is facts and God's saying no no my ways are higher than, than those ways my truth overrides those facts and that's what he's doing in your life right now so bless you guys and just keep uh, updated with um with where we're at and we're up to i hope it encourages and blesses you and uh, if we're going to see you at an event um i can't wait it can be, it's going to be awesome so bless you guys bye